Hit with Dean's Bees. It is hi, uh, April thirteenth, twenty nineteen, and it is forty eight degrees outside and pissing rain. Uh, welcome spring. Everything's budded out. Trees can't fly, or starting to bud. Trees can't fly. We're down here in the bee basement, uh, my little workshop here where I work all uh, winter long on doing hive work and getting stuff ready for our short little bee season that we have here in North Idaho. Um, anyway, wanted to touch on you guys, touch on something with you guys. So today I know there was a lot of packages delivered around the area, or the first part of it, uh, Tate's Honey Farm in Spokane, Washington. Um, East Farm Feeds uh, got packages and nukes there in Otis Orchards, um, right off of Trent. So if you guys watch this, um, you should give Jerry or Kirk your business. Um, there's a few other ones that came around, uh, the area. Anyway, uh, my, I didn't get any today. I was at a couple of the spots today. Uh, a buddy of mine picked some up. Dan Norsini picked up a package today from Jerry Tate. Um, but, uh, mine will be here in two weeks. I got two coming from WSU, uh, from Outdoor Bee Company. Uh, they've got some old WSU genetics and some Glen Apiary genetics. Uh, so I've got them coming. I've got a package coming from Olivares, a package of Saskatraz bees. They'll be fun. Um, and three nukes from Mike Hicks, obviously. Hugus Crick Honey Farm, best bees I've ever gotten um, for up here. They're great bees. But anyway, I wanted to go through something with you um, today on just my setup, just my standard setup on the way I start my hives from buying woodenware uh, to finished product. So here we go. This is what I do. So I just picked up a couple of boards today from Jerry Tate over at Tate's Honey Farm because I realized I was running low on eight frame boards, which you wouldn't think I'd be running low on anything. I mean, you, I've got just crap everywhere down here. Anyway, um, I told you I started using these slatted racks too. And so, um, but what I do, these boards are cool because these are, um, solid. This is a solid cedar board, um, bottom. So, um, this, it's all, uh, solid, uh, dimensional lumber construction. Um, but what I do is I will always, uh, run caulking down my seams for my bottom there. And then I will also, uh, on plywood boards like this one, I didn't do it on this one, but you can see how the plywood will separate from your boards. Um, those cedar dimensional lumber boards are much better. Um, but I will run caulking along all in here so that... Um, it, basically you're painting the front of this with caulking just to make it a little bit more weatherproof. I should be able to fix that, fill it, and throw some clamps on it. But anyway, what I do is I caulk all that before I paint, uh, prime and paint. Don't caulk the inside where the hive will be sitting on. Um, and also your staple holes or your nail holes um, on your boards as well as say a slatted rack nail holes always caulk I caulk all of my nail ho holes on all of my woodenware so when you buy or build you're always going to have nail holes and your dovetails here I will always uh, put caulking in here. This one isn't done yet, but I'll caulk those before I paint, prime and paint. So always caulk your hinges because it's just going to make it that much more weatherproof. I buy uh, quite a bit of used equipment. I don't have an issue buying used equipment. I usually scorch it really good, kill any spores that are in there, uh, and haven't had any issue with foul brood, European foul brood, American foul brood, anything like that. Um, so, but anyway, just wanted to kind of give you a setup, uh, an idea of how I set up. And that really is going to help, um, for the most part, weatherproof. That's the initial start of weatherproofing your hives for our northwest winters. Uh, that's a pretty frame of 
natural foundation honeycomb. That's a little food, a little food for my bees or my nukes that I make. This is going to be a fun one. I'll cover this next time, but this is a little sneak peek. Uh, double nuke. And I'll tell you where I got that from. After you caulk your inside seams, I always paint. I prime and paint everything. Um, and that's just going to help your woodenware stay dur more durable. I mean, it, it sucks having to buy stuff all the time. And so if you can do something to make it last, um, I say you should. So then these are the slatted racks. And so the 3 8 side, there's a 3 8 side and like a 1 inch side or a 7 8 side, I guess. You can see it a little better if I do this. So, there's that. And there's the 3 8 side. So, 3 8 side goes up. So, that's the side that will go against the bees. So, that gives you this space right here. But that's 2 inches of depth before your hive body starts here. Okay. So, that's this is what this is going to look like. It's All this is a spacer. But what it does is it allows your queen to build comb and to lay lower in the lower foundation. Okay? So then, obviously, 8-frame. So 8-frame box goes on. This is what it'll look like in the hive. So that's how close... Your, the lower section of your frame, sorry about that, is going to sit. So that's going to sit. It li actually lines up with the slats there. And it allows your queen, number one, it does two things. It allows her to lay lower because she doesn't feel like she's clear getting right on the landing board. She, they don't like to get the whole way down in their frames. So that's going to do that. Also, it's going to mentally think that they have more room than they have, and so uh, it's less apt for them to swarm. So that's what those slatted racks do. Um, the other thing that they do, so this is my oxalic acid, my OA iron. Um, if you don't have one, you need one. I took the uh, metal little metal shield off of mine that usually sits right there because they set it up for 10 frame stuff. I run both 8 and 10 frame. But what I was getting at was, so when you go into vape, you're going to run this thing the whole way in, okay, like that. And you're going to let that iron heat up. That thing heats up to like 400 degrees. If your slatted rack wasn't on you'd be right at the bottom of the comb. And this was the biggest seller for me. So picture this slatted rack not being on. You're all of a sudden touching the bottom of your frames. So there's your iron. At 400 degrees, you're talking about only not even a half inch worth of space there. Heaven forbid that sucker get hot, you touch the bottom of the frame, and all of a sudden, your frame's caught on fire. Uh, what if your queen's down there laying? Your bees are always attacking this thing because they're pissed because there's a hot 400 degree iron in where it's not supposed to be. Uh, it doesn't give you any space there. The slatted rack now gives you two inches of space between the bottom of your frames, which would sit here, and your iron, which is clear underneath, okay? So now all of a sudden, you've got two plus two and a half inches where you're not catching stuff on fire. You're not killing bees, potentially your queen. It's just much more uh, conducive when applying oxalic acid in vape form. Which is why I've started running these 
Slatterdrax. I think I'm going to like them. Uh, one thing that I have noticed on the hives that have them is that the bees are less likely to use this lower entrance. Most of my hives, I have a center hole in. And if that center hole is there, or say even a Vivaldi hole entrance, they don't like to use that lower entrance on the hive as much as they do when the hive is just sitting, when the box is just sitting on a board. So, and then, uh, so whether you're singles, doubles, uh, doubles with honey supers, however you do it, um, I always run a vent board. Keep those on pretty much all year anymore. I never used to, but I just got sick of taking them on and off and storing them. Uh, this one, obviously, Vilvaldi board. These I made myself. Just took two-inch chunk of cedar, drilled holes in it, screen on the outside. And I do have a video of making these on, I believe. Um, and then screened underneath as well. So I just used... Um, I just used window screen uh you have to use aluminum or metal steel i guess window screen you can't use you can't use plastic window screen they'll chew through it um or uh say like quarter inch or eighth inch hardware cloth if you can find it um because they can't get through there either and so that is my setup with a just a telescopic top cover on it um Vilvaldi boards are fantastic. I love these. Very hard to find anymore. I guess you could build them if you want to. Um, using the hardware cloth on those vent boards that I make allows you to uh, emergency feed if you need to. So it would be small little feed like this, small little screen like this to where you could set a cake on there if you needed to. But that's it. Um, just wanted to show you kind of this setup and why, uh, and number one, auxilic is most important, especially you've just picking up, you've just picked up your packages or your nukes. Don't know where in the country they came from. Maybe you've already treated your hives that you have that haven't died. I would hope so by now that you have. Um, but so I was at a class um wsu actually washington state university their b program their apiary program is unbelievable so if, if you haven't looked at it you should go online and really take a look at it they did a study of uh packages took a hundred packages of bees that came in from all over the place whether it didn't matter where they were picking them up uh and all over the northwest it wasn't just a segregated uh spot like you know Coeur d'Alene, spokane uh, it was all over the Northwest, uh, took a hundred packages, did mite counts, every package, at least 5% mite counts on it. it. That's what you're putting into your hives right now. That's why I say always, always, as soon as you install, you need to vape them. Uh, that's going to number one, control your mite, ca your mite counts right now. You don't have any brood in there. And so this is the best time to control mite counts before they get out of hand for you. They're going to ramp up, they're going to level off, but then come August, September, and we'll get into that later, uh, you better be applying mite treatments or you're going to, your hives are going to die. Uh, just throwing that out there. Everybody's hives has mites. You can't get away from them. Um, granted, there are hot spots, but you should be treating, everybody should. So, um, But that's it. I just wanted to show you my setup on the way I'm running my hives this year. This is the, going to be the first year I run these slatted racks, and uh, they should be kind of fun. Um, see how they do. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or would like to tell me a pros, cons, whatever, leave them in the comments for them. Maybe you know something that I haven't touched on. So appreciate you guys watching. Keep watching. I'll be making more throughout the year. Looking forward to bee season. Uh, nukes are two weeks out. Thanks for watching, Neans Bees.